You won't believe some of these incredible, rarely known stories of a few NBA megastars, from scary childhood stories to shocking scandals and a whole lot of mysteries. Uncovering the crazy lives of some of these players will have you at the edge of your seat. So wait until you hear some of the wildest true stories about your favorite NBA stars. The story of Kawhi Leonard and his dad. We've all come to know Kawhi as an ultra-modest and a very quiet superstar. He's literally as close to the vest as someone can be. But we never really thought hard about why Kawhi is... Kawhi. I mean, what makes his personality so tranquil and seemingly nonchalant? It's not to say that the way he walks or talks has really influenced the way he plays on the basketball court. Because, you know, in his 11 seasons in the NBA, he's only won a couple of finals MVPs, a few Defensive Player of the Year awards, and oh yeah, he's a member of the NBA's 75th anniversary team. His resume is exemplary, and he'll only get more opportunities to enhance his legacy as we all hope he returns to the hardwood fully healthy for the Clippers this fall. Kawhi's unique character has helped him become one of the more appreciated hoopers in the NBA. We all love his even keel nature and get a great kick out of his rather awkward laughs, but that's all fun and games. <laughs> what most don't really know about is Kawhi's relatively turbulent upbringing as a kid growing up in Southern California. Cali gets his name as the birthplace for some of the best players in the league. It, it no doubt produces great talent, but along the territory of great basketball players, the notorious lifestyle, and the serene weather is unfortunately crime and violence. Kawhi's adolescence saw him grow from an amateur baller to one of the best high school players in the nation back in the late 2000s. At the end of his junior year, Kawhi was regarded as one of the best prospects nationwide. His stellar player helped propel his school to a 30-3 record. Kawhi finished that season averaging just under 23 points per game in an insane 13 rebounds. He received the California Mr. Basketball Award to top off his great season. It was all going great for Kawhi. He had his eyes set on a promising college career that would punch his ticket to the pros, until the 16-year-old Kawhi was met with the worst news of his life. Kawhi's father, 43-year-old Mark Leonard, was shot and killed in January of 2008, news that would change Kawhi's life forever. It was just another workday for Kawhi's father, Mark, when he got into a dispute with someone. The individual shot Kawhi's father 10 times before he would end up passing away just a few hours later at the hospital. Kawhi's dad was someone Kawhi saw as a mentor and his best friend. Amid the devastating news, Kawhi pushed harder and was focused on making it to the NBA just like his dad wanted. And after a solid college career that saw Kawhi lead San Diego State to the Sweet 16, Kawhi declared for the NBA draft. He ended up getting selected 11th overall, he got traded to the Dynasty Spurs, and made his first finals appearance in just his second season. Not bad for a quiet kid. After that, you know the rest of the story. Kawhi's father would be proud. LeBron devastates Reebok. LeBron said in 2018, signing with Nike was the best decision I've ever made. Here's what this is all about. When LeBron was coming out of high school in 2003, he was projected to be the most sought after prospect by shoe companies ever. Amazingly, he received even more traction as a lucrative shoe deal partner than Kobe Bryant. Now, Kobe had already claimed three championships and was arguably the best player in the league. And here was a 17-year-old kid that was a bigger draw to global companies like Nike and Reebok. So what actually ended up happening? Because Michael Jordan had become the definitive face of Nike starting in the late 80s and Kobe was with Adidas, LeBron was expected to become the face of Reebok that would propel Reebok into a multi-billion dollar industry one day. When LeBron and his mom and a couple of his most trusted business moguls sat down with each company to review offers and the different royalties that were presented by each, Reebok did something crazy quite staggering. Reebok was prepared to give LeBron a $10 million check in his hand right then and there if he had elected to move forward with Reebok. As crazy as it sounds, LeBron slept on the offer for some time before eventually saying no. Let's backtrack a little bit. Here was this high school kid who wasn't even old enough to sign his contract on his own and spent years in turmoil and poverty, and he declined a $10 million check? Nah, man. LeBron, incredibly for such a young man, had the presence of mind and the maturity to exercise some patience before making the biggest decision of his life. He knew that regardless of who he ended up partnering with, he would instantly be afforded more than quadruple the amount of money his family had ever made in LeBron's lifetime. The money was to come, but LeBron truly put his trust in some of his more experienced representatives to help him land the best deal. Just a few weeks later, LeBron agreed to a 7-year, $77 million contract with Nike, plus a $10 million signing bonus. Absolutely remarkable. LeBron passed up on Reebok and carefully signed the most important documents of his life that would officially end up relieving him and his mom from years of awful financial burden. Just months after LeBron inked his deal with Nike, Reebok, seeing no real future in sight with any marketable endorses, decided to sell itself to Adidas. Had LeBron went to Reebok, there's no telling where he would have lifted them to. But because of one high schooler who was finishing up his senior year at the time of their contract negotiations, Reebok's fortunes changed forever. Can you imagine if you had that kind of power as a teenager? It's mind-blowing to say the very least. 
KD's cold-blooded free agency decision. Outside of LeBron's decision to sign with the Miami Heat during the summer of 2010, perhaps no player has ever dealt with the same immense, brutally scathing criticism that Kevin Durant received among fans and social media as a whole in 2016. How are you viewing this move from Durant? Well, I'm viewing it as the weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar. We all remember the painful reality of the 2016 playoffs. KD and company had the 73-win Warriors down 3-1 before choking away three straight playoff games in a collapse of epic proportions. Now, if OKC had sealed the deal in the Western Conference Finals, there's no telling what they would have pulled off against LeBron and company in the 2016 Finals. When KD's free agency became a topic of serious hot interest in June, many believed that he would stay true to OKC and resign with them. But when KD hadn't reached a new deal with the Thunder before the start of free agency on June 3rd, 30th, folks speculated if he would really end up leaving. Remember, Celtics came up as a contender for KD's services, along with the Knicks, Clippers, and even the Utah Jazz. The thought of KD linking up with the Splash Bros in the Bay? Yeah, there's no way that's happening, right? Fireworks erupted on July 4th when KD announced the decision to sign with the Warriors, joining the 73-win juggernaut. But let's take a look at what was actually transpiring behind closed doors. KD's friendship with Russell Westbrook was a true bromance, which is part of the reason why fans were almost certain Durant wouldn't leave the Thunder. But wait until you hear the story. A while after KD signed with the Warriors and all the smoke had cleared, it was reported that KD went out for dinner with Russ and he told Russ that he'd re-sign with the team. Let me say that again. He sat face to face with his star teammate and told him that he would be resigning with the team. This was reportedly just the night before KD jumped ship to Golden State. Even after going behind Russ's back like that, KD never called Russ after his decision. The two didn't speak for a long, long time. KD and Russ seemed to have mended the fences in the relationship to some degree, but it's nothing like what it used to be. But how could it ever be the same after that cold-blooded move by KD? That duo and those OKC teams will go down as just another what-if or the best duo to never win a title. The unsold story of Kobe's death. Revisiting Kobe Bryant's death painfully reminds us of the icon we all lost in early 2020. It still doesn't make any sense that he's gone, but it's worth fully uncovering just what caused the helicopter with Kobe and his daughter in it to crash. So what really happened? Around 9 a.m. that day, Kobe boarded his flight at John Wayne Airport with his daughter to do what the father-daughter did pretty regularly, to play basketball. That morning in Los Angeles, there was such severe fog that the Los Angeles Air Support Team decided to suspend all flights until at least the early afternoon. Remember, Kobe boarded at 9 a.m., hours before flights would resume. The quote from the Air Support Administration was, the weather situation did not meet our minimum standards for flying. Kobe wasn't even allowed to go airborne that morning, which just makes this entire story more heartbreaking. Reports came out saying that just before the fatal crash, the helicopter was flying greater than 160 miles per hour. And just to frame that better, 160 miles for a helicopter is about ideal under normal weather and operational conditions. According to numerous sources, the visibility during the flight was so low that the helicopter eventually spun out of control in the incredibly dense fog. The pilot's decisions to fly that fast under those circumstances was an incredibly woeful decision that in turn shook the entire world. And to confirm the pilot's culpability in the crash, the NTSB board that investigated the cause of the crash concluded that pilot error was the most significant reason for the crash. The crash took the life of Kobe, his daughter Gianna, and seven others on board. Not only is the legacy of Kobe Bryant marked on the court, but what he was beginning to accomplish in his post-playing career was preparing to be just as legendary as his 20 years of excellence in the NBA. More than two years after his tragic death, the NBA, fans, and figures across the globe do their part in honoring the late, great Kobe Bean Bryant. Rest in paradise, Kobe and Gianna, Mamba out. The success of some of these players on the court sometimes has us forget or ignore the trying past of these great athletes. As hard as some of these times were for players, their families, and us fans, it's truly a remarkable piece of what makes their legacy so special. And that's why we love the NBA. There will be more great stories to tell as the careers of these athletes continue to unfold.